Hey guys, I've got two problems here. One of these is asking me what is half of 10 and one of them is not. So which one is asking me that? And if one of them is not asking me that, what is it asking me? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to think of this without fractions for half a second. So I want us to think about six times two for a second and what that means. One way to think of it is six twos. So when I add six twos together, I get 12. Now let's apply that to a fraction because sometimes when we have fractions, we're like, what on earth is happening? So now we're gonna apply that to a fraction. So 10 times one half can also mean 10 halves. So when I add 10 halves together, Two halves gives me one. So when I add all those together, I end up with five. Okay, so what this is asking me is what is half of 10? Now, after we look at this one, I'm going to show you some real life examples this could apply to. And that's like my favorite part. So I hope you stick around for that. So now let's look at what this means. Now that we know what this is asking me, this is asking what is half of 10. Well, what does it mean when I do 10 divided by one half? Because that kind of seems like it's asking me what half of 10 is as well. But let's go ahead and look at it. So again, we're going to look at it without fractions for a second. So if I have six divided by two, what that's asking me is how many times does two go into six or how many twos are in six. So if I have like six circles, say, how many twos are there? Well, there's one, two, three. So six divided by two is three. Now let's see if we can apply that to our fraction, 10 divided by one half. So I'm wondering, how many times a half goes into 10 or how many halves are in 10. So let's draw 10 circles. So there's my 10 circles. I'm wondering how many halves are in there. So if I cut a circle in half, there's two halves right there. So if I cut the rest of these and I count up how many halves I have, that ends up being 20 halves. So what this one is asking me is how many halves are in 10? That's the difference right there. Now, what are some real life problems that this could apply to? I'm so glad you asked. So 10 times one half, a problem that this could be is Ben practices the piano for half <clears throat> for a half hour each day for 10 days. How many hours did he practice? Well, you could probably figure out pretty fast. Oh, he practiced for five hours. That's an example of 10 times one half. But what about the other way? An example we could have here is if I have 10 cookies, I wish I had that right now, and I break them each in half, how many people can I give half a cookie to? Again, you could probably pretty easily be like, well, I can give it to 20 people, right? Oh my gosh. All right. Last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this checks out mathematically, right? The way we've been taught to multiply and divide these. Okay. I was going to try and keep that on there, but it's gone. Okay. So when I multiply fractions, I'm going to put my 10 over a denominator, which is just one times one half. And when we multiply these, we go ahead and multiply straight across. So 10 times one is 10. One times two is two. And guess what? 10 divided by two is five. Bam, checks out. Let's make sure this one does. When I divide fractions, again, I'm gonna put my 10 over a denominator of one, divided by one half. When I divide fractions, I'm going to Flip my second fraction and multiply. If that sounds like witchcraft, 
I'll link a video for you in the corner where I explain why this works, okay? So we flip and multiply, multiply straight across, and I end up with 20 over 1, which just simplifies down to 20. Oh my gosh, don't we love it when all of these things work out? Okay, I hope this made sense. Thanks!